Hi, I'm Lewis Bloom. I'm the ESPN Stack Guy for NHRA Drag Racing. You're listening to the PBR Podcast. Hit it! What's up, everybody? PBR Podcast, Mike Plano, Derek D, and sitting in, my man, L Boogie, Lewis Bloom. What's up, homie? L Boogie. L Boogie. This is going to be a very... What's up? How are you? You have to explain why you call me L Boogie. I'm going to break it down for everybody. This is going to be, honestly, a very emotional PBR episode for me. Okay. Why, why is that? Because you're, you're a pansy or what? <laughs> I, don't, I, like, I don't understand. You want to explain what that would mean? I don't Pansies cry? Pa- you're a pansy. <laughs> no, it's emotional Play because my, my my buddy here, El Boogie, El Boogie, Bloom. I've been wanting to get get him on the show for a while, and just randomly, I get like an alert from uh, from Zillow about real estate. Oh yeah, and, that's, that's right, right. Yeah. And Lewis and I um, lived in the same building. Uh, in Asbury Park, New Jersey, for for many years, the Asbury Riviera. Actually, if you really want to know, <laughs> right? Is that what that's that's well, what that, they call that's it? When, that's one of my friend when I first moved there. A friend of mine says you live on Deal Lake. That's the Asbury Riviera, right? So, oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Even when Asbury was really bad, that area was still really yeah, nice, still right? still kind of happening. Waterfront, block from the ocean, ne- here nor there. I get a message uh, that his unit is up for rent or in sale. And I, and I hadn't seen, I moved out of the building a while ago, so I, I hadn't seen Lewis. We bump into each other on occasion. And uh, I texted him, and I was like, he, he's been in Asbury Park and in that building. I think he might have built, you built the building, didn't you? Uh, 20 years, I believe. <laughs> 20 years. Right, so. you've been in Asbury for 20. Yeah, actually, you know, I, I, I lived in Marlboro and moved to Asbury, and I, I never really thought I'd stay there for more than like a year or two. And then it was like, wow, 20 years I've been here. I, right. I couldn't even believe it. But. Do you still live there now? Yeah, I live there now, but I'm, I'm moving to right, Los so Angeles. Right, so he's moving. So I texted. Ah. That's the story, right? So I texted Lewis, and I was like, you're moving? And he's like, yeah, I'm like, I'm out of here. Like, no, You're out next week, right? Or this uh, week? A couple weeks. November 30th, I'm actually going to head L.A.? West. Yeah. Why, why, why L.A.? Right? Why? Well, we're, we're going to get that. All right, yeah, all right, right. okay, okay. So I wanted, like, I, I hit Frankie up, our producer, and I was like, we have to get uh, Lewis on the show. Reach out to him immediately. We had we had uh, a couple times where we, we our schedules didn't work. So, yep. uh and one of the most interesting people I've ever met, he, he, he was one of the first people I met in the building. Now, just to break down Lewis Bloom in a nutshell, when I first met Lewis and I bought my unit in Asbury Park, I made a decision. Like, I wanted to um, decorate everything in my unit and down to my pet was going to be based on Asbury Park. And I was looking up these fo- – this is really, I think, our, one of our first inter- yeah, interactions. Yeah, exactly. And we lived on the same floor. Originally. Oh, all right. You moved upstairs. Yeah. I forgot. So uh, I was Googling imagery for Asbury Park pictures. I wanted to buy pictures and put them on the wall, and I wanted everything to be Asbury Park. And I came across your pictures. Exactly. And I hadn't, I didn't know he was a photographer, especially this photographer. Uh, and I think that was our first interaction, right? Yeah, and I think it was uh, your girlfriend at the time who wanted to purchase the photographs to give you a gift. Right. And, uh, it was great. I had to walk like you know, you know, sixty feet to give him the photographs. And yeah, and we had, well, where did you see the photographs? I though? think I found them on the internet. They were on the web, probably. Some, and I some, saw them on the web. And I saw the. Uh, I loved the photos. To this day, they're hanging in my home, uh, and there's a number of them. Um, and I think I saw in the bottom right or left hand corner the signature Lewis Bloom, and it led me to the website Lewis Bloom. And then now, I was now, like, now, did you see him at the pizza place at Serpico's? Maybe, I, maybe, maybe. That might have been where you saw him the first time. Yeah, that, and, and they're in the Pony too, but. But mostly uh, Serpico's and Allenhurst, which is not too far from where we're speaking right now, is yeah. where people could see him. And so that was like that was like the first interaction. Dennis, uh, don't bark. I know sometimes Dennis barks. Oh, geez, Dennis. Uh, that was like the first interaction that we had. So Lewis, Lewis is a like a, a, a phenomenal photographer who's I guess um, captured the essence of Asbury Park when Asbury Park was down. Yeah, ni- 1970s. I first went to Asbury, you know, because that's what we did when we were kids. We'd go play pinball. And yeah. and back then when you turned 18, you can go out and, you know, and go to the Stone Pony. So I went to the Stone Pony the day I turned 18, May 2nd, 19, whatever, and uh, <laughs> 77, 78. And uh, I went there and I was like, wow, I kind of I kind of like this whole world and started going to Asbury. And once I, once I, I got the Bruce thing, you know, the imagery kind of went easily to my head. And then I was going to art school, so... I'd always bring my camera and take photographs, and you know, and I kind of hit him in a draw for years. I mean, I just was over it, 
But then someone, the guy, probably, the guy we did the pony actually had me had me bring them out and show them to people. You probably have a bunch still that people would people would buy. Lu- Lewisbloomphoto.com, Actually, I bet every yeah, day. Is. I mean, you have like you have to have people wanting those photos specifically with the with how Asbury Park is on the rise again. Oh, I it's, mean, it's it's already bright. It's <laughs> come on up on the rise. I mean, it's already it's already that was, that was pretty good. <laughs> like, but it's already like. <laughs> it's already has risen. It's not to the risen. It's not high. to the top. We're, but we're, I, I, I think it's jumped the shark. Actually, I think it's going to jump the shark. Yeah, you really? think so? I, yeah, I think what's going to. Is that happen- why you're going to L.A., Lewis? No, no, that is. Lewis, I, tell I, me why you're going to L.A. What's the real reason? I, I, I thought I LA. thought I would die on 500 Deal Lake Drive, honestly, because I really <laughs> love. I love living. I love the boardwalk. I love you know. I mean, the best part is like you know bicycling to a really cool restaurant yeah. or. Going to a sports bar to watch, you know, watch my teams play, or the teams. There's <laughs> a new sports bar right on Cookman. I yeah, know, he did exactly. that. My, my teams, though. Exactly. But uh, but it just uh, one of those things where, you know, all of a sudden I have a job opportunity. But Asbury Park, to me, you know, the whole idea of what they're doing, you know, I like the fact that they're giving people a chance to live in some great places, but they're going to build so much expensive mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, too expensive. The middle's going to get cut out, and that's going to be a problem. And all the people on the west side who've lived there their whole lives – who I think add the character to the town to sure. make it what really makes it special, the culture, the multicultural aspect of Asbury will be lost when that happens. You know, you don't need 800 trendy restaurants and, you know, a, yeah. a lot of trendy coffee shops. You need, like, a little bit of everything. I get what, yeah, and, that, that and makes that, sense. And that's what I'm concerned about. And and I've gotten that feeling recently, and this was just before I decided I was going to move, that, it, like, you know, Asbury's going to change. You, you might not like the way it changes. I mean, I love the town. I mean, I love everything about it, but... I'm, maybe, I'm concerned. Yeah, maybe it'll uh, maybe it'll be like a more of a balance. I hope so. I really soon. hope so. Yeah, it's sad because in gentrification, I guess you can lose exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, so I mean, hope. I mean, greed. You know, it's 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 greed. You know, and I have no problem with people. You know, you know if you can sell something for four hundred thousand, why would you sell it for two hundred thousand? It's mm-hmm. you know, it's common yeah. sense. But you know, I like I like the fact, like you know, the best the thing I'm going to miss most about Asbury, besides the the live music which I've I've experienced since I was eighteen, mm. is like the the movie theater on Cookman that shows the art films that you can't see anywhere else. Yeah, and you go there at five o'clock, and you're there's like five people in there, and it's like what a pleasure. Mm. People are nice, you know. It's you know you see the same people, and uh, that's when. I, and when you go to a big city like Los Angeles, I mean, unless I find a little community that has that same feeling, I'm going to really miss that. <laughs> what year did you come to Asbury Park? Uh, I figured twenty years ago. So what is it? Uh, it's uh, like seventy six ish. No, no, no. It was ninety five. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, well, when I moved, it was the mid nineties. When right. I first came to Asbury, it was in the in the mid seventies. The first time, you know, definitely nineteen seventy seven. Once I got a driver's license and I could drive that, from Marlboro. But that's when Asbury was still like I vaguely remember being a child of the the eighties. I vaguely remember going to. Like go, going on rides there and stuff, yeah, and then that it, was the end. It was, it was, that was just the end. at the like. I remember being on the boardwalk. It's such a vague memory. I was probably four, and uh, then after that, my my only memory of Asbury is when I remember going to the casino and the merry-go-round vaguely. But then in the late '90s, it became a skate park. Yeah, and I, mean, I, I, I remember that. Yeah. I was sponsored by that skate park, but wow. don't let him fool you. He was a rollerblader. We we've been yeah, but we were road. awesome. I was, we were, I was awesome. But you rollerbladed. Yeah. I, I bladed around Asbury a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I skated and I skated in the Warped Tour a few times too. But the rollerblading, like rails, ramps, ramps half pipes, oh, all that all right, stuff. Right. But anyway, that's my last memory of that place. And then now it's you know just with what it's been. And I remember right after I turned twenty one, me and my friends were like, yo. Let's go to Harry's Roadhouse. It's in oh, yeah. Asbury. We're going yeah. out in Asbury. Right. Yep. Like, just saying you're going out in Asbury. Fun, fun, just one quick thing. Yeah. Funny you bring that up because I remember, you know, my sister came down from, she she lives in Marlboro. She came down with her, my little nieces. They were little kids. And we went to dinner on Cookman at Harry's Roadhouse. <laughs> and that was like, that was the breakthrough place. I mean, yeah. That was the, yeah. First, the first. First new kind of cool place. Way ahead of its time. Yeah. And, and it, right at the beginning of Asbury. Yeah. You didn't have to go too far in. Yeah. Just, no, <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of those places, the beginning part, they didn't survive because they were too early. Right, right. You know, unless that, that's, they, that's Harry's. Yeah, right? that Harry's. And Harry's was, you know, I remember looking at my sister going, we're having dinner on Cookman Avenue in Asbury. I mean, this is unheard of. Yeah. You know, and it was, that was really the start of it. And I, you know, Bruce tried to save that place. He actually played two, uh, oh, two yeah. gigs there in one night. I got in the first one thanks to uh, one of our neighbors who actually knew someone to get me in because tickets were impossible to get. And I remember going like, Harry's Roadhouse, you know, Bruce playing for like yeah. two and a half hours. It was amazing. That's why, I, I, that's why I brought it up and asked, asked you the question, like when you first went there, because people people might not know, our listeners in England or in Iowa or, or California, they might not know that in Asbury Park in 1972, 
I mean, in the fifties, it was like the spot on the Jersey oh, yeah. Shore. I mean, you yeah. came down here, and it was the creme de la creme. It was it was like the you know a vacation. That's resort. where you went. But in the seventies and seventy two, there were the riots. Yeah, the and, riots, and exactly. the city burned down. So the stories that Lewis are t- is telling and Derek, like at the end of the seventies, early eighties, it was kind of. It was kind of desolate, abandoned, if you will, right? Most nineties. Yeah, it was. It was really. I mean, up until the nineties, I'd say for me, uh, you know, my 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 late father would, you know, he knew, he knew how much I loved Asbury because when I was a kid, he grew up in Brooklyn. He said, if you went to Asbury, you were like the uh, you know the wealthy elite. That's who came to Asbury, like in the thirties and forties. And then, you know, when I first came in the 70s, you know, I mean, you went to the boardwalk, you didn't go anywhere else. No. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the palace was as far west as you would go. And mm-hmm. that was it. Yeah. And the casino, which was, you know, but my friends and I would go out. It, the typical routine was we'd go to Mrs. J's, which was next to the Stone Pony. No longer there. No longer there. We'd have clams in the half shell, cheeseburgers, hot dogs. And then we'd go to the casino, play pinball, then walk across to the palace, play some more pinball, come back. Get some beers and then go on the Stone Pony till like three in the morning. The bars were open till three. Now they're open till two. Mm, right. And honestly, I don't even know how I survived because I can't. You know, people always go, "Do you ever watch uh, Jimmy Kimmel?" I'm like, "I'm I'm never up past ten <laughs> thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was the Pony like back then? Well, the Pony was uh, was really cool, especially when I was eighteen because I was really young and I was meeting a lot of people who were actually established. They were in their twenties and thirties, and and they were very friendly. Really like they welcomed me in. And plus, I had my camera. So I was like the house photographer for like yeah. a year and a half, so you, which, which okay. got me got me a really good spot for the shows. Like yeah. I, I saw Elvis Costello at the Pony. Wow. I saw Bruce, obviously. I saw a lot of you know the Ramones. And uh, you photographed all of them, right? Yeah, I'm on my website. There's a lot of the a lot of band stuff, and then eventually I realized I couldn't make money at it, and I got tired <clears> of just like standing in front waiting all night. And I just said, you know, I'm going to go watch and hang out and. And that was good enough for me at that point. But you probably didn't realize, like, all those pictures you were taking, hold on to them later well, in life. Well, well You can sell these. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I've sold a bunch of them yeah. for books because people Google, you know, they look for it like Mike did with my photographs. But the one thing that I really am bummed out about is that um, next to uh, the bowling alley was the Fast Lane, oh, which yeah. was a really great rock club back in the uh, I've 70s. Heard of it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gone. But you two on their first tour in the early 80s played in the Fast Lane. Now imagine wow. they sell they you know they sell at stadiums. They're playing in a bar which is the size of like a long living room, and yeah. and I didn't bring my camera. That's the only real Ooh. regret I have because <laughs> those pictures would be worth something. Yeah. Exactly. Now do you were you like do you know Bruce personally? Well, back in the seventies, Bruce I walk- Springsteen for yeah, anyone. Who yeah, knows. yeah. <laughs> right. We've referred to yeah. him as Bruce this yeah. whole episode, but around here it's like you know just you know it's Bruce. But yeah. um, back in the seventies, when I first met him, I walked up. I was uh, backstage at the Pony, which is really just like where they hide the beer. Yeah. And uh, the kegs. <laughs> so I went back. I went backstage and I introduced myself. And I had known that he had been to Raceway Park, which is where I you know grew up, and that's my career. You know, in, in NHRA drag racing and drag racing. So I kind of knew that he he knew about the track. So I said, "Hi, my name is Lewis. I'm the announcer at Raceway Park." You know, I'm a big fan of yours. And he was very nice. And I, I took photos of him and, and I talked to him. And then over the course of the years, you know, when we started, uh, let's say, stalking him, because he'd <laughs> go out all the time in yeah. between tours, he'd go out and hang out at the Pony and go to the, the headline or all these different places. And we'd follow him around. And uh, it got to a point where one time he came up to me, he goes, do you have a job? Like, you're always out, like, chasing me around. I'm like, well, you know, and so I knew at that point it <laughs> was of time. a fan. Yeah, he, he knew that I was like, it was a little over the top. But the last time I spoke to him was in the 90s. It was actually in Florida. He saw me at, at, uh, in Fort Lauderdale, just randomly saw me and came over and just said, what are you doing here? I'm like, that's cool. I leave New Jersey. I'm on vacation. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. You know, but that's that's the last time I talked to him. If I talked to him now, I'd have to remind him who I, you know, like where I know him from. But, yeah. you know, that's, that's okay. I just want to see him play. I, you know, don't need to be be his friend or anything like yeah. that. I saw, I, I, I think I've told a story. I met him that one time. We were at Casino Skate Park skating, just me and my buddies. He walks in, he's like, yeah, what's going on here? What are you guys doing? I'm like, I'm like <laughs> yeah. uh, we're skating. He's like, yeah, it's cool. I was oh, like, yeah. All right, man. That's a good, that's a good impression, by the way. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> it's it's pretty amazing that you you lived through those times, you know. I mean, oh yeah, because it, it's such a storied place. It has so much history, um, and I, and and you were there. You you lived it, and that's it, it's like sitting down. You're like sitting down with an old World War II vet. Yeah, well, in terms of uh, <laughs> in terms of that, you know, I mean, for me, like, I mean, the music part was really what what got me to Asbury because I wanted to be around the music. Because hmm. let's face it, when you go west of uh, Route 18, which is one of the highways that kind of borders the Jersey Shore. There's not a whole lot of music. I mean, there's right. bars and people play. Which but, is ironic because Bruce really started in Freehold. Yeah, yeah. 
Right. He played the freehold shop right, one of my friends told me. I would have loved to have seen that. Like, oh. hey, mom, is what's that guy doing over there? And, you know, like, uh, I don't know. He's making some sounds. <laughs> he's a struggling I artist. He's never going to make it. Yeah. He's in shop right and freehold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, and, a, he's, back, he's on his bag boy break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's the borough, not even, you know, right, not even township. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, the music kind of drew me to Asbury. And, and back then, I mean, you could see, I mean, I, I mean, I have friends who are older than me who saw, like, Zeppelin play in Convention Hall. Oh, you know, crazy. Stuff like that. I mean, things that don't even exist anymore. You live in a very culture, yeah, artistic uh, area, and that's you know? kind of what he, what Lewis is saying. Where it's kind of sad that maybe you're losing a little bit of that element mm. with the rebuilding. Um, are you at all? I was going to say upset, but that's the wrong term. Are you? Uh, are you going to, or do you have the want to actually photograph Asbury Park now? And no, it, it, no, right? It's over. Why? Because because everything that I th- I loved about Asbury was the tackiness of it, you know, mm. the, uh, the charm of it. So anything that's new and, and not, you know, doesn't have any history to it really is not that interesting. I mean, you could still, I, you know, people photograph Asbury all the time. The casino is like the yeah. main, you know. I mean, I mean, all the time. And I follow people on Instagram and, mm-hmm. you know, I'm obviously on, you know, Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. And I, I, I follow photographers whose work I like. And, and people still make beautiful images of Asbury sure. because, you know, you still have Convention Hall. You still have the uh, what's left of the casino. Mm-hmm. But if I see one more photo of the frame that says casino yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. with a silhouette, you know, a silhouette body walking through it, I'm like, you know. <laughs> the, the husband and wife right yeah, in front of yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's I mean, photography one-on-one at yeah. this point. And, and, I, and I go out there, you know, I spend, especially this summer when I realized that I was moving, I spent every day I could riding my bike on the boardwalk, walking on the boardwalk, just just taking it all in, so I so mm. I don't miss any anything about it. And I saw like every day there's a wedding photographer shooting, you know, yeah. portraits. There's people, you know, the the boardwalk is just something about it. It has a lot of character, yeah. and people are always out there now. When I photograph Asbury now, I mostly, you know, I mostly just look for weird juxtapositions of the people, and and you know, the lights got to be special. And uh, but it's not like the old. I mean, I used to go out there and I'd get out there at six in the morning and wait till the sun comes up. And you know, I'd have an old four by five, you know, view camera which takes four by five inch film when you put the hood over your head. Yeah, yeah. You know, I did that. You yeah. know, and, and and that was really. You know, I really kind of. You know, I got to know the people. You know, I met a lot of people because you know they'd see you with this weird camera and they come up and talk to you. And I really, I really met a lot of, of the locals, the people who really lived in yeah. Asbury. Yeah, I mean, and they you're told like the me mayor great stories. The city. Well, I, you know, people call me that. You're <laughs> yeah. the mayor. You know, when I walk, around, I call you that. When I when I'm at <laughs> when I'm at Port, it's like you know, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? And uh, you know, that's kind. Of, you know, you just yeah. you live someplace and you just you know, it's grown so much that I was there in the beginning. Yeah. Even though there's people I know, you know, before me, like if you're at Frank's Deli, you know, you go to the local deli and mm-hmm. you know, you, you know, half the people at the counter, so. I mean, that's, you know... Anthony Bourdain was, uh, did an yeah. episode of Parts Unknown and stopped at that deli yeah. because that's how important that I is. He used to ride the train to the city with Frank's daughter. Like a while back. <laughs> but dumb story. Um, <laughs> did you did you, uh, did you happen to see a video of a guy and a girl on the boardwalk uh, in Asbury <laughs> uh, doing a bunch of lip singing to a bunch of different songs and then uh, proposing at the end? Did you see that? Nah, I didn't see that. Oh, Lewis. Nah. Shameless plug. Yeah, I yeah. saw, I did see Dar- uh, Darlene Love, who was, you know, someone who was, you know, part of the history of music, you know, from the 1960s. Great singer. She did a video, uh, a whole, like, video, and I was, I was, I was watching the whole production part, and I'm like, you know, they could do this at any beach anywhere, but they picked Asbury, mm-hmm. you know, because just that, it's that, got that you know, vibe. Yeah, it's, yeah. Got the, it's got the scenery. It, but it always will, right? It'll oh, always yeah. have that. One well, square mile of history. Well, what, what'll happen, though, is that, you know, when they build condos right on the boardwalk and, uh, you know, I mean, I think mm. from, you know, if I was the mayor of Asbury, I would have, first of all, when they were tearing down the palace, which, you know, I understand why it had to go. The building was falling apart. I would have taken the wall. You know the Tilly, the fam- that was the big thing, yeah. and made that part of like a double A baseball stadium. Oh, like great. right there, yeah. you know, right on that lake. Oh, that could have been amazing. That would, my, one, you know, my ex roommate thought of that. He's like, they should put a, and then you get people coming in all the time. Yeah, you know, you bring people. You know, a great That's stadium. An interesting thought. What would yeah. you call the team? Asbury Park. Uh, what? The, you know, the Tilly. Uh, you know, the Tilly. Tilly Tilly's something. You know, <laughs> yeah. Tilly Field or something like that. But but that would have been fun. And and as long as the boardwalk, you know. It, it, you know, you don't need 25 trendy restaurants. You need a couple, then you need some other things. But, you know, there should be some amusements for the game. I love playing pinball. I really, uh, really well, they kept was, the, was uh, the, the pinball, the silver ball arcade, right? Yeah, but, I mean, you know, back back then there was like, you know, pinball and there was games and there was stuff to do. And, yeah. you know, I mean, mm. it's I mean, coming back around to that uh, slowly. I think surely. there'll be some more. You know, of the that new maybe. theaters are opening. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Isn't but, there a new like music club that's going to be on Cookman? Yeah, it's actually a theater. It's called the Independence House of Independence. The House of Independence. Yeah, that's, gonna, that looks interesting. It's really it's cool. Um, <laughs> Derek's going to be in a play there. Uh, give it a plug. Yeah, I'm going to be in a Christmas Carol there. Uh, wow. the, the first the first theater production in that space. I'll be playing uh, Fred Ebenezer Scrooge's nephew. It's like a like a maker space, if you will, for for entertainment. Anything. So it's very they can change it around for what their needs are. That's great. Um, it seats about. To something, I depending guess. how, 300. yeah, depending. The, 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 there's the theater seating, and then there's de- depending how many seats they put in front of that, like on the floor in front of the stage. Yeah, it can go anywhere from like two to two fifty, I it's, think. And it's also going to be a bar that's open regularly, so they uh, want to have uh, entertainment 365 days a year. So on whatever level, even if it's an open mic, yeah, uh, and we're going to be something up by the bar or something. And hopefully, PBR will be uh, doing a live podcast from there. That's where yeah. we're probably going to do our first live show. That'd be great. That's great. Yeah, that's so really good. All you people in England, that's get in your works. tickets now. Yeah, it's a really, really <laughs> cool space. And, and the, the theater seating con- like uh, contracts at the right word? Yeah. <laughs> the word? Sure. Retracts, retracts. Yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's not giving birth. Cool. No, it's not giving birth. <laughs> so back to, back to Derek's original question when I put the brakes on him right at the beginning of the episode. MusicLore3.com. That's the no, video that's that not. I produced <laughs> on the boardwalk. I muted, his, I muted the shameless plug. I think he would like that. No, he, he would like, like that. that. Especially the shot in the beginning with the convention hall in the back. We'll show it to you. But what I, what I wanted to get at is you asked, uh, you asked Lewis why L.A. Yeah, why and LA? That, Why an emotional episode? Because it, uh, you're gone, right? You're leaving. So yes, what we didn't talk about at very all. Sad. Right? Well, it is for, for a lot of people. The mayor's gone. But we, what we didn't touch upon at all to, since the beginning of this episode is what you really do. Uh, and you're a statist- statistician for NHR. That's what I'd ask you about, getting into uh, yeah. you know, drag racing. And well, so this, is, this is why you're going out west. You want the long story, you want the short story. Uh, well, let's, I, let's I, start, why don't we start at the beginning? Tell people what you've been doing for the last 20 years. Well, for the last uh, 40 years of my life, I've been announcing drag racing, which I still do. I don't do it as much as I used to, but that's kind of where it all started. And then for the last uh, 15 years, I've worked for ESPN. And I was uh, brought along to kind of give them all the facts. I know everything, you know, it's something I just know about. And uh, so that's my expertise. And I do a little talking on the air. They gave me a microphone about eight, nine years ago because I was so annoying <laughs> to the producer. I'm like, I can't believe we don't get this information on the air, you know, because the, the host at the time was a little shy about some of the real nuances of the sport. Mm-hmm. And he kind of made him a little bit nervous. He's got an amazing voice and he has a great presence, but the little details kind of kind of freaked him out a bit. So they go, we're going to get you a microphone. You could say the stuff on the air. So I, this whole kind of thing called, I'm called Stat Guy, mm. which is, you know, they had to give me a name. So, and you know, my <laughs> Twitter handle's on there and I answer questions and oh, nice. I've done some bits, you know, you know, I've uh, worn my Met shirt on camera and stuff like that. I've done. Well, it's ESPN. I've, yeah. yeah. I, we promote, we're always promoting the next, you know, yeah. show or, or next, you know, Monday Night Football. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's kind of uh, how it all started. So part of the deal is that this job, the production was handled by ESPN from, uh, Original office in North Carolina. ESPN has a lot of production companies around the country. Yeah, and NHRA, which is the sanctioning body, like a lot of sports, decided to take over the production of the TV show themselves to save cost and maybe even you know control the content a little bit. So they offered me a gig to move to uh, Los Angeles to work on the show full time, and you know they you know they pretty much made it worth my while. And there was a bet. The president of the company had a bet with the TV guy that there was no way I was going to move. Actual a bet, like money. Like there wasn't because you just wouldn't wouldn't move. Yeah, because well, he's the mayor of Asbury yeah. Park. <laughs> Everybody goes like that. Jersey guy is not leaving Jersey. You know, I I grew up in Brooklyn, but I, I've lived you know in Jersey most of my life. Yeah, so it's uh, it was a difficult decision. So what, what what made you get into drag race? Did you drag race? Did you ever no? Have you ever you just liked the sport? It's it's a simple story. A like quarter mile, go. Yeah, see what yeah. happens. Well, you know what it is. I I always liked cars when I was a little kid. I mean, mm-hmm. we're talking like you know seven, eight, nine years old. I used to draw. I'm you know like the art you know the artistic thing. I'm always sure. drawing stuff. So so I always liked cars. And then um, we moved to uh, Marlboro, which is not too far from English Town, where Raceway Park is, the drag strip. And I used to go play tennis during the night during the summer. And I hear this like womp womp, you know. I hear cars going through the gears and making noise, and I'm like, I asked my dad. I was uh, right before my 11th birthday. I said, you know, what's that? He goes, I think there's a racetrack there. Would you like to uh, check it out for your birthday? So, May 3rd, 1970, my dad took myself, <laughs> my sister, and my close friend Mark to the drag strip for the first time. My dad, who did not have a driver's license till he was 33, because he lived, in, lived in the city. Yeah, yeah, didn't need it. And uh, we went to the racetrack, and uh, I just, like, loved the whole experience, you know, the noise, the smoke, the people. Yeah. And, um, you know, I never worked on a car. I never drove a car. And I was like, oh, I, I like this. So I went home, and I bought every 
magazine. Back then, you could buy Hot Rod, Car Craft, all these car magazines, which mm -hmm. you can't really do anymore. And I just memorized everything. And by chance, when I was 14, I got a job working there. Totally random thing. And That's, that's awesome. And that's, that's funny you say that. When I was 14, my first job was at Wall Stadium selling programs. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, the, that was my, my very first job was the program kid. At Wall Stadium. When you were 14, uh, Lewis was already in his 40s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that about that. Sad, sad to say. But I uh, I don't know if Mike told you, I actually host a daily show called Fast Lane Daily. Oh, wow. Which is a, a show. Da daily show about car news done with with comedy. And in the st it's a style of like, the best way to put it is like... Uh, Top Gear? Well, sort of. The, we, we have a lot of the new, news. Why We do reviews and stuff too. But mainly we're, we're a daily show, Monday through Friday. Um it's uh, the best way to describe it is like the Daily Show meets like late night Jimmy Fallon, but about car news. Oh, I love any, that. Any car news. Oh, I mean, uh, I'm to I'm all about cars. I'm yeah, like totally. Do you know? Uh, we just had her on the show, Shay Holbrook. She's no. in the she's in the drag racing. She she used to be. She just recently got in drag racing, and she's now she's with a jet car. She's jet jet drag racing, which is a, like she has a jet dragster. A jet dragster, yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Shay Holbrook. She's been she's. She like uh, her and a couple other like female racers. Are, oh, are she, fairly she, prominent. she runs the IHRA. I bet. Yeah, I think she does. Yeah, yeah. And there's a there's a uh, there's an older woman who is like the 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 main character. She won the championship this year. I forget mm. her name, but I, I know who you're talking about. There's they have a couple females that race. Yeah, like yeah, three or four. Yeah, yeah. I know I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, I mean it's uh, yeah she's she's been on the show a few times. But we have, I mean we have anyone on the show. You know we just talk about cars. We, sure. You know it's but it's. You know, I, I always tell people you don't have to be a car person to watch the show. You could watch the show, learn some cool shit along the way, yeah. and, uh, you know, still be entertained because we keep it, you know, like I do characters and we do segments every day. You do bits, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It, he has, don't let him fool you, he's had some really big guests on. He actually, uh, you know, we have a big election coming up. He had Donald Trump on the show. <laughs> Yeah. Really? Yeah, and Donald Trump is actually a huge fan of yours and drag racing. Isn't that right, Donald? Let me tell you something. <laughs> oh, my God, it's fantastic. I love drag racing. Fast, golden streets, huge walls on either side. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. Trump, 2016. <laughs> it's going to be, be president. It's going to be president. <laughs> you know, the, the drag racing community, is uh, they're very much behind Trump. It's going to be they, uh, yeah. they put it on their cars, actually. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I saw a guy today. It was like, it was, it's a, like... Impeach Obama, Clinton should be in jail, vote Trump. <laughs> I, I, listen, I watched a lot of that debate. Uh, I watched a lot of it today, actually, online, and I, I'm, st I'm sorry I'm to see the most it, recent man. One. I'm starting to believe in the Donald. I don't mind Donald right Shake now. Shake it up. <laughs> we'll see what Shake happens. Shake it up. You know where he got me? He, said, he started talking about, uh, that people were asking him about, carry, uh, about guns, and he's like, I carry all the time. He's like, I carry... You know, mo he's like, I carry most of the time. You know what? I just sometimes carry. I want to keep people on edge. I don't want them to know when I have a gun. You know, but he's like, great. He's like real. There's no political. Or his security bullshit. detail carries. Well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, Lewis, I want to know a little bit about this story, though. So when you're 14, how did, what happens? What's this random act that gets you well, this job at the I was uh, a precocious little kid, so I called the racetrack. I happen to have the phone number for the track. And I, uh, I was curious about... There was a race in June that I really loved where they had like Big Daddy, Don Garlic, Shirley, Cha-Cha, Muldowney, Jungle Jim, all the icons of the sport. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that they had the right icons. You know, like, you know, I knew exactly who I wanted to see. So I called up the racetrack. It was January. And the guy who, you know, picked up the phone was a guy named Vincent Knapp who owned the racetrack, the late Vince Knapp. And I talked to him on the phone for two hours about drag racing. Now, what I... You're 14. Yeah, I'm 14. I'm, you know, 14. I'm a kid. Yeah. You know, and I'm talking to this, you know, 30-something-year-old adult who happens to own the racetrack about drag racing. And uh, he goes, um, I'm, I'll never forget this. At the end of the conversation, he goes, what do you get in English? I go, what do I get in English? I go, I, you know, I'm a solid B student. You know, that's, <laughs> that's I'm, I'm right there. And I go, why in the world would you be asking? He says, well, I'm looking for someone to, uh, to be my announcer, to, you know, talk on the public address system. And I think, you know, you'd be the guy. I said, I said, I've never been in the pits before. You know, like, you know, couldn't even get in the pits until you're 18. Yeah. And I go, I don't have a driver's license. He goes, I don't care. He says, you know, you know what you're talking about. So uh, I showed up there a couple months later. He gave me a mic and said, here you go, and paid so, me five bucks an hour, and that was it. You know, so that's nice. how it all started. So he didn't put you on mic right away. He kind of he kind of made sure, brought well, you on. Well, what he, what he did is um, I met him the first time, and we, he kind of showed me around. And I was there to watch the race anyway, so I just kind of met him so I'd see who he was. And then, you know, this is before cell phones where you could just, you know, hey, meet me in the pits. Yeah. You know, and then uh, I came back. It was, um, it was April. 
It was a race called the Spring Funny Car Bonanza. I actually have a photograph I carry with me that my dad took because my dad drove me there. And um, <laughs> it's the first time I announced. I picked up the mic and I said, I don't even know how it started because you know I had no you know no idea what to do. <laughs> and and it, and it and it was fun because every Wednesday at Raceway Park they have like a test session where you know the average Joe can race their car. So the new announcer gets to practice on Wednesday, you know, and kind of work his chops out and. I would I would sit up there and go like, hey, there's a Camaro, and then someone would go, no, that's a Firebird, or like, there's a Buick Grand Sport, no, that's a Chevelle. So I, I really had to learn, you know, I, I I got an education, and it just kept going and going, and you know, I learned from some people who were really talented, people who really knew what they were doing, so that helped a lot. Is is he still around? The guy who gave you the- no, unfortunately, he passed away, okay. and he he really was an amazing person, but he also, you know, he told me he says, this is what I pay, I'm not going to pay any more. You know, because I know there's eight people who would do that job for nothing. Mm-hmm. And so he forced me kind of out to do other other races. I started traveling and making more money. Hmm. Where I realized I like I can make a living from this. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Your first job is essentially what you still do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You're really, oh, yeah. it's, it's a totally related to what it's, it's, you still do. It's, and it all came from a from a you picked up the phone. Yeah. and you made a phone call. I made one random phone call that essentially ch- changed my life. Did he ever get to see you? Um, on television, did he ever get to see you on no, that level? No, he passed away before, before then. He's that. Been, he's been gone a long time. Okay. He he did date the girl that I went to uh, my high school prom with, which is one of my favorite things ever. Wait, wait, wait! wait, wait. <laughs> time out. How old was he? He was in his thirties, and she was uh, she was like eighteen or nineteen. But what? But, but but this is this is a long time ago, and uh, you know, I mean, this this woman was like, you know, she was like. If if I was if I was eighteen, I was like fifteen, and she was like thirty, you know. Right, so right. Mm. so it was really not a big well, deal. But chicks but, uh, mature faster. But but he he was <laughs> he was a very um, charismatic gentleman, and and just you know I miss, I think about him all the time because because he was good at what he did. Yeah, and and he, he he created things that people still talk about in drag racing to this day, and so, his, his family still runs the racetrack. So is the show uh, that you're going out to L.A. Where in L.A. are you going to be? I'm going to live uh, somewhere around the Pomona Glendora area, which is east of LA, mm-hmm. off the uh, the world famous Ten. Yep. And uh, <laughs> you're gonna you're now going to describe all take the Ten, all areas yeah, four or five. Yeah. That, that's a great bit by <laughs> to I lo- the PCH. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that's one of my favorite things on Saturday Night Live. The yeah. Californians. Californians. Yeah. That's you know, great. I mean, I you know, uh, I've been to California probably forty times, mm-hmm. but. I've never been there and gone. Wow, I really want to live here. Well, and you're you going know? to Pomona too, right? So that's a Pomona has actually Pomona has a um, Stockton College. Yeah, in I've, Pomona, I've, I've heard of that. Yeah, I went to Stockton College in Pomona, New Jersey, which is which is kind of interesting right? when you think about. It. I almost went to that's that school actually. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to go there. You I didn't was, go to Stockton? Well, my, you know, when I went to, when I went to school when I went to college, and you know, my parents, you know, they were like, "You got to go to college," and I'm like, "All right, that's no problem." I was thinking about going for like communications to be like a radio DJ or a, some some type of talking head, but I've always wanted. I always love photography, mm. which is really like one of my you know main you passions. Went to school of visual arts in so New York. I, yeah, right? I went to SVA. So I eventually, I, I, a girl in my class was looking at the catalog for SVA, and I was committed to go to either Stockton or Glassboro because they could I could do both there, do photography, and you know take classes in communications. But I always knew. When I looked in the mirror, that I was not going to be doing the nightly news, you know, I just didn't didn't have that confidence <laughs> in myself. So, um, so I pretty much decided to go to the art school. And I, at the same time, I was I was going to like the Museum of Modern Art, you know, looking at Picasso, but I was still watching guys doing burnouts on Sundays at <laughs> Raceway Park. So sure, yeah, I've all, and, I've, and I've lived that way my whole life. I mean, two, two weeks ago, before I went to Vegas, I went to uh, the Modern Art to see the Picasso sculpture exhibit because. I'm still drawn to that, sure. you know, that that in a, in a major way. Yeah, I was actually, I was. I have a bachelor of fine arts and graphic design, so I was at that artistic side too. But oh yeah, um, yeah, man, that that's awesome. So you're going to be, so are you hosting a show? Like what what's the what's what's the name of the show? What's the well. That's uh, I'm definitely not the host. They actually have a play by play guy, and they okay. have a. You know, I'm, I'm not really what they call talent in the business. I'm kind of like the goofy stat person. Mm-hmm. But I created this You're a ni- character. Yeah, I'm a character. Kinda. I created this niche for myself. About you know, actually, it's like nine years ago this weekend at a Vegas race where my boss finally said, like, give him a mic, you know, and then and the tech people had to figure out how to give me a mic, which was really kind of neat because. <laughs> You know, typically when you do play by play or you're on the air, you have like this box. You always mm-hmm. see it on TV, and the guys are wearing the headsets. But and they, are you're not in the pit, right? You're up. You're no, up top. I'm. I'm. We're, we're actually in the back of a tractor trailer. That's our studio. Okay, so it's like a, a studio that just goes to all the races. 
So then I got a mic, and you know, the first time, uh, you know, the the play by play guy, his name is uh, Paul, goes in. We're gonna go to uh, Lewis, our stat guy, for something, and I just you know started saying, well, you know, and I just did my bit, and yeah. I usually don't do it in an announcer voice, but I always when I have something I'm excited about, I'll stand up and I'll kind of like point and the guys at the tr- and, and they, I used to have my own camera, which was really cool because the camera was on a a robotic camera, yeah, so it would show the talent, which is, they sit kind of in front of me. And then when they were going to go to me, and I used to wear like pink or weird colored shirts, and I had these thick glasses and stuff. <laughs> I looked, kind of played the part. Yeah. And um, they 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 swivel the camera, and it got to the point where I heard the camera, I got really you, excited. You knew, yeah. I, it's like Pavlov's dog because <laughs> I knew I was going to get airtime. And eventually, from what I was told, the other people I work with got jealous of all the airtime I got because they'd see my face so much. Yeah. But my boss loved it because he goes, you know, we swing it over. You you know, you you look like a geek, you know. <laughs> you got these glasses on. You got all these papers around your, you know, your laptop. Yeah. And I and the, I always thought Apple was going to give me a computer because at my 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 Mac was always on air. Like, yeah. I always made sure my Mac. They didn't even on make it. you cover the yeah. Apple. Over. No, no, I didn't worry about that. I mean, it just wasn't a big. deal. And how long? Though. And how long? How long has that been going on? Is that that, that started in um, 2007 and it's still okay. going today? It, now, so is that the show? Is that going to transfer to the new show? Well, that is something that when I was uh, negotiating for my move to California, I, the guy who hired me, who's now the you know the vice president of you know television, I gave him a list of things and I said you know on air presence, and he said. He said yes, but he said he has to figure out how to do that because, you know, Fox Sports is, you know, it's I'm I, I'm pretty much from what I know and, you know, I've watched I watch sports all the time. I'm the only on-air stats person, you know, who really is part of the fabric of a show versus let's say they have the college football set. Well, yeah. You know, game day where they'll have like a guy to the side. Right, they, and and around the horn has like Tony Reale. Yeah, That's yeah. how he started his career. Yeah, yeah but he's stuff. now well, that yeah, yeah, but he didn't start that. He no, started yeah. Stat, Stat Boy. Boy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, you know where you know where Stat Boy's from? Is it from you, Marlboro, New Jersey? Oh, Tony Reale's from Marlboro. He's, he's from Marlboro. Oh, yeah, oh, so yeah. He is. Wow. But he's so now the host of Around the Horn. It was oh, when I'm sorry. It was PTI. He PTI. was Stat Boy. He, he was still Stat, is Stat Boy. Because yeah. it's yeah. the same yeah. studio. Yeah, and it goes on next. Yeah, but uh, sixty percent. Who was who was the original host? He's now Max Kellerman. Max Kellerman. Max, Kel- yeah, Max. Oh, he was. So Max Kellerman was the original host. Oh, you're of around right. The you're horn. right. And then he left, and Tony yeah. took the job. And then Tony, yeah. yeah, Tony's pretty. Tony does. It's I think good. he was on. He's on Good Morning America now, though. Oh, he's not on PTI. Now? I don't. I don't think he's or, on uh, Tony yeah. Reale's on Good Morning America. I, th- I don't know if he's still on it, but I think that's where his career got so big that they moved him to uh, the big. You know, that's that's the cash cow is the morning, yeah, the morning news show. So, oh, interesting. That's pretty much. It. I mean, they got they went the sports route, right? Like we have uh, Michael Strahan. You know, oh yeah, you know, like they're using sports figures. Well, for all that stuff. and you know what is similar to the the stat guy thing is what the refs do. So, so the so you got the announcers, you got like Troy Aikman and Joe Buck, mm-hmm. and then they go to Mike Piera. Yeah, that's who used new. to be ahead. Yeah. Yep. So, like you go to him, it's like, oh, this is the play that just happened. Mike, what? Did, Mike out in L. A. What? Did, and they'll sometimes he'll be on camera, yeah. or you'll just hear his voice and explaining the play and why this play happened. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm relating to what you do, but just stat wise. Well, like for example, this weekend we uh, we crowned two champions in two classes. There's four classes, and you know when you go to an NHRA national event, there's actually like nine classes, but. The professional class is the one that raised for the most money. There's four of them, and we were, you know, our season ends uh, next week in California and at Pomona at the racetrack. But uh, we, you know, we we crowned two champions. So I had uh, some stuff, you know, some prepared, you know, idea stats, and uh, I do a trivia question. So I kind of played off a trivia question. So you know, I talked to the producer. I'm like, hey, good time for the trivia question. And usually, you know, if I hit it the right time, he won't yell at me for getting in his head because there's 80 people talking to him. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, I got to to do the trivia question. It was a really good one, and the you know the people who watch the show I think appreciate that I bring up you know stuff from the '60s, the '70s. I know the history and do you, you know, sense of place. Do you come up with that? These all those stats and stuff just in your head, or you have papers and stuff in front? Well, of you? Well, right? most of it's in my head, but what what'll happen is like I'll literally go to sleep. I'll wake up in the middle of the night, and I'll be like, hmm, oh yeah, that's a great idea, and I'll and I'll send myself an email so I don't forget it. Because when you're you know fifty something, you start forgetting sure. those little the little <laughs> minutiae you start. I to still lose. I do that too. I email myself stuff. Just yeah, to this. yeah. I mean, you got to take you got to make notes, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's a great thing to be able to do that and 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 have have a chance to remember something yeah. that you just thought about because normally you wouldn't. Right, like yeah. comedians do it all the time, right? They like piece of pen, pad, got, and paper I, by I, your bed. Yeah, like let me show you some. Yeah, I have like these are all just like. Comedic uh, lines that could be used in stand up right here. Just, yeah. Got write it, it down right. real quick. <laughs> Lewis, that music you hear is a game we like to call top or bottom. 
Oh boy. Yeah. It's a little sexy music, right? Yeah, it's, um, it's got a little sexy sound to it. So it's kind of a sexy game. So I'm going to read you two terms. Uh, you're going to tell me if these two things were a relationship, which one would be on the top, which one would be on the bottom, and we're going to round table it. It's tailored to you. You ready to play? I'll, I'll see what happens. Top or bottom, number <laughs> nice one, drag racing or MLB? Top or bottom? Wow, that's a tough one. Yeah, that's the point. Wow. Well, I almost want to take the fifth on this one. You can't. That's not a <laughs> go. Go with what pays the bills, man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll say drag racing. <laughs> drag racing on top. Yeah, is that that's the higher part, right? It would yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, I think drag racing. I mean, unless you're like that kind of, unless that's what you dig, we can make bottom on top. No, 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 no. We'll I just, mean, he said he's a diehard Met fan, know. but yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I would say that you know, my passion is drag racing. My soul's the Mets, though. I, I like, mean, that's, I like that's that. really, that's really, I've been thinking about that a lot lately because people ask me all the time. Mm. And the best part about being stat guy is people, I do the baseball promos, the Met promos, and people, random people come up to me in the pits who I don't even know and go, hey, go Mets, <laughs> especially this past race. They were like, I hope the Mets don't blow it. I'm like, <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> Derek D. Well, they, <laughs> They blew it. Um, you blew it! You I blew gave it. you a chance, and you blew it! <laughs> That's my De Niro. Any good? Where, where did this personality come from? What are you talking who, about? Who is this person? <laughs> <laughs> Here's my De Niro. You do. <laughs> you do. That's it. That's uh, it. That's, that's <laughs> it. Uh, I think I would go... Uh, you know, I, I, I like cars, obviously, and stuff, but I'm not huge into racing, but I have... Drag raced on a track, and that's just fun. Yeah. But I played baseball all my life, but I don't necessarily watch yeah. baseball all the time. I watch the Yanks and stuff, so I don't know. That's tough. Uh, I think just from the core and, like, growing up playing baseball, I'd go MLB on top, but that's a tough one because, you know, racing's fun. Like, and, I muted his microphone. I'm just going to go yeah. on. I mean, that, come on. Seriously? Come on, man. Oh, who was that? That was a long <laughs> explanation. All right. I'm sorry. I'm MLB. Still, I still don't know what was on top. MLB on top. MLT. Yeah, okay. I'm going to say the same thing. MLB on top. Yeah, uh, that wouldn't make sense for you guys. <laughs> you know, I'm not even a baseball fan. I only watch. I got to figure out what Mike's mute button is. What time is reach over? <laughs> I will smash that finger. He he is in charge of that mute button right there. <laughs> right. right? I'm known to mute. I'm using my sexy announcer voice. Um... <laughs> I don't watch baseball unless the Yankees and or the Mets are in it in October. That's the only time I'll watch. I can watch no I can watch any Mets baseball game. And then uh, my girlfriend is European. She's from she's from Germany. I met her at a Springsteen show three years actually three years ago last week in Virginia. So <laughs> nice. so this year, uh, after the third or fourth game, I'm like I'm like really upset that they lost. Yeah. And she goes, uh, um, what game is it? I go, well, it's, you know, the fourth game of the year. She goes, how many more games are there? I go, 158 or something. And she's like, she looked, she's like, are you serious? I said, <laughs> too many games. This isn't like uh, Bayern Munich soccer. They play once a week. This is like yeah. every day for, for uh, months, you know, so. They really did shit the bed, though. Just, yeah. Just saying. Top or bottom number two, Jersey Shore or Sunset Boulevard? Uh, Jersey Shore. Oh, so quick, too, man. Not even a question. Right. Yeah. I wonder in twenty years living out there if you if you change your mind. Nah, I don't think so. I've yeah. been to Sunset. I like Melrose actually better than Sunset, but yeah, you know, I I would say uh, Jersey Shore is where it's at. There, too. yeah, hundred percent Jersey Shore on top, Sunset Boulevard on the bottom. Obviously, we're partial. We live here, but again, Jersey Shore is not like that show is. So just don't. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, like that's that's a disclaimer when we talk. We have, have episodes like this. We should really make man. It's re those people aren't from it's, the Jersey, and it's Shore. not like that. Ugh. That's Jersey Shore. I'm Not at all. Um, I don't know, man. I I love Jersey. I'm I'm Jersey born and raised, right? But I really dig the West Coast. I do too. I don't get out there nearly enough. I lived out there for a while, right? We've discussed that. I was out there last year for the Rangers. You can come visit. I, you know what? Now I have a, now I have a reason to come out, man. <laughs> but Jersey Shore on top, top or bottom number number three: photography or surfing. Four. Wow, that's tough. Photography or surfing. Well, I would probably have to say, I'd have to say surfing. And, and the reason why is that I've been a photographer my whole life. Mm -hmm. It comes to me pretty easy. Surfing is something that I've only done as an adult. I started when I was in like 40. And it, you know, I, wait, you started surfing at 40? Yeah, right around 40, 39, wow, 40. Man, that's impressive. Yeah, no, and, and I got my butt kicked out there. I mean, I dropped it on, I had no idea what I was doing. I think so. you dropped it on me a few times. Yeah, I ran you over one time. <laughs> that was that was a great moment. No, oh, no for who? No blood, though. No blood. <laughs> he snaked you. 
Uh, I was not. Nice. Nice. There was no snaking. That was just pure running <laughs> over. I think it was on purpose. <laughs> nah, nah. I don't have that. I don't have a mean mo- bone in my body. But yeah, I, I'd say surfing because surfing, when you get it and you experience it and you catch a wave, it is. There's nothing to describe. That's it. true, man. And it's it's kind of it's kind of silly because it. You know, the Jersey Shore, you get a ride for like 10, 15 seconds at the most. And you're yeah. like, <laughs> that. it felt like it lasted an hour, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's Sometimes you get some better breaks, but in the most yeah. part. I, I'll never forget the, my, uh, my, my, one of my all-time favorite rides, and I believe you were there. We used to rock this break called uh, Darlington and Esplanade. It was yep. kind of the same beach. Now, which is gone because of beach replenishment. Gone. Gone completely. Nothing. But there were two jetties. There was a deep jetty off the right, and on a big swell, you got a nice long left, and yep. you could get past the shore jetty. The shore jetty, which ate my WRV 90 one time when I hit it going so full I, speed. Right, so I was there with you one day, and uh, the cackler was out there. I, I forget. Oh, yeah, I know. Dominic. Yeah, we Dominic. called him the cackler because he yeah. just wouldn't shut the fuck up the entire time you're out there. You <laughs> shut up. He, he, and he was he was pretty aggressive with his words. Right? Yeah. So I caught a wave, um, and I started like really surfing when I moved to the building and we're, you know was friends with all driver Joe served with us uh, mm-hmm. and uh, Lewis and a bunch Warren a bunch I, of friends I, I think Joe when Joe saw me I walked out of the, the building one time with a full wetsuit on during the winter and I think this you know our friend Joe saw me and said if that guy can surf <laughs> I could surf because that guy you know like the skinny yeah. you know older you know like he thinks I'm a hundred you know, I was walking out there in the winter with a wet, winter wet. Suit. I wish he was here right now to, to like to t- to tell this tale because I caught off that jetty sitting way. I used to like to sit deep. I, I longboard, yeah. and I caught it. And you said f- ten to fifteen second ride. It if it was like it might be a a quarter mile from from jetty past the other jetty. I'd say probably about maybe an eighth at the most. And, but hmm. that that equates to like a thirty second ride. Yeah, it was that long maybe forty five second ride in Jersey. If you if you can clear that stu- the stub jetty, the middle jetty, you you had a pretty good ride. Yeah, that was the greatest <laughs> ride ever. It's funny. That's kind of the theme in Jersey because I'm a snowboarder and like what we're used to here, even in like Pennsylvania. Is like our the rides are you know maybe two couple minutes yeah. all the way down the mountain, but you yeah. go out to Colorado stuff. You may do two three runs all day, all day. <laughs> um, yeah. But I would go uh, go surfing on top and photography. I mean, I like photography, but uh, yeah. I grew up in OG, and a lot of my friends used to shoot the pier and stuff. Mm-hmm. I was I actually was more of a bodyboarder, but that, that would be oh, that, of course that, you were. That would be that would be Ocean <laughs> Grove, right? Yeah. Oh, Derek D. Rollerblader. Skier, bodyboarder, no. snowboarder, <laughs> snowboarder, snowboarder. Yeah, well, it's questionable. Did we go? You, I snowboarded with Joe. No, Did, were you there that day? I, I don't know. Oh yeah, you, were your friend? Uh, had I'm a yeah, good snowboarder, yeah. man. Tell, tell him about my buddy with uh, a friend of mine who is a, a, a race winning drag racer, uh, double amputee. What was his name? Uh, oh, Reggie. Wow. Reggie Showers. A really amazing. Do you have man. a Twitter handle? Um, probably. I know he's on Facebook. I'm not sure about it. I don't think he's on what, Twitter. What is he on Facebook? Prize Reggie Showers. Spell his last name? Uh, S H O W E R S. So Reggie Showers, hashtag eggs. eggs. Throw digital eggs at him on Facebook. But not a bad thing. <laughs> but he, uh, he um, double amputee, and he, uh, he learned how to snowboard. I helped him learn. But we were we were out at uh, Camelback or one of those Blue Mountain or yeah, something. Yeah, and he was shredding. And Cal- he, was, he was ripping it up, and I waited a little while, and I looked at them, and I said, you know that guy right there? They're like, uh, yeah. You couldn't I, see. I go, um, he has no legs below his knees. You know, Killing he's it, double man. amputee. That's like that uh, uh, that woman snowboarder. She was in the Toyota commercial during the Super Bowl last year. I forget her name. But she, she, she kills it. She's a snowboarder too. It's just impressive, like that. man. It's impressive. Yeah, very yeah. impressive. Yep. But I love snowboarding. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I've done it for. I've, I did it. I started in uh, winter of '91. The first time I went on a board. I, I still have the board in my apartment. It's an old Burton Air. <laughs> nice. And I've been all over the West. Uh, my girlfriend. Uh, she's. You know, we go to Germany. You know, ski by her house in yeah. Germany. It's oh really, wow, that's awesome. Really fun. This is kind of a tough one for me because I'll, I'll equate photography to my video career, which is basically half of my career. You know, filming that's stuff. True, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'll take surfing on top any day of the week, man. It's because a, it's 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 a religious thing. It really it is. is. It's spiritual. It's it's. Uh, there's nothing like being out in that water at a sunset. You have uh, no say in what the waves are doing. No, you, you just know, have to ride what the, that, is given you. That is a very good observation. <laughs> that really yeah. is true. And and the power of the ocean. Like when you when you wipe. And you feel that ocean beat you up, or you're trying uh, to get out on a big swell, and you're just getting pounded. Like you really start to appreciate what it is. You got to respect know? Mother Nature, man. The big yeah. wave surfers, yeah, that get towed in, like <laughs> insane. And I'd say, like on the on the flip side of that, as spiritual and and beautiful as surfing is, I I almost feel like photography is the opposite. It's ugly, and and stress. It's work. 
Well, depends on what level well, you're no, looking at. No, for me, oh. you know, like that's what I'm saying. I'm not taking pictures for for beauty like Lewis did of Asbury Park. I take them because I get paid to take, you know, right, videos yeah. to take. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's totally different. Like I always made the joke that I would shoot a puck a pile of shit if you paid me. <laughs> and by shoot, I mean film, yeah, right? I understand. And lo and behold, season two of Impractical Jokers, I showed up to set, and it was when they hid Sal Volcano's keys in a pile of shit, <laughs> and the director said to me, Polano, your job is to shoot the, the shit. shit. <laughs> and it came true. So surfing's on top. <laughs> that, that is frightening. You know what I mean? Well played. Top or bottom number four, Bruce or you 2 Oh, Bruce. It's like, you know, not I've, even... Not I think you probably could have said anyone. Bruce, Bruce or blank. It's well, always Bruce. Well, you talked about politics before. Chris Christie was interviewed by someone, you know, from Fox or something and said, so uh, Bruce or uh, Bon Jovi? And, you know, Bruce is a noted liberal, which, you know, I have no problem with. And uh, Chris Christie on Fox said, oh, you know, Bon Jovi. And I'm like, really, dude? You've seen Bruce play 120-something times and you're going to go down that yeah. road? I'm surprised. I mean, I was like, yeah. so Bruce is, I mean, I, I have a lot of respect for you 2 and Bono, and I've seen him play. I've seen him in a small room, and I've seen him in a big stadium, but, you know, yeah. Bruce is, uh, you know, at 66 years old, can still, still take an arena and just, you know, completely kill it. Yeah, I think I'd go with Bruce on top, U2 on the bottom. I've, I've never been a big U2 guy. Yeah, I would appreciate, neither. but I've never been a big U2 fan. Uh, Bruce is clearly on top, and I'll never forget when I became a. I, mean, I was always a Bruce fan. I always knew who Bruce was. You can't live here and not exactly. But I remember going to see him. Uh, he was going. It was after nine eleven. You correct me if I'm wrong. The, I usually the, see, the rising tour. I, I think he practiced at convention hall. Yes, the okay. practice shows. And exactly. I got in. I, oh, I, I got. I went to some of those. Yeah. And and what he did, there was a line. A practice show. Asbury Park. <laughs> Asbury Park is one mile long from convention hall to the casino where Derek talks about skating, right? So the line was all the way down Convention Hall, the entire boardwalk thick, which is probably 20, 30 people deep, all the way down, waiting to get in the show. And I got in randomly because my sister's masseuse was doing the tickets. So we pulled up. You couldn't park in the town of Asbury Park. You have to right? walk. You have to so walk. Stacy called me up, and she's like, I have these. My, my friend is is doing the tickets. You know, if we can get to Asbury Park, we're, we're in. And I was like, oh, well, shit, let's go. And I had my motorcycle at the time. I put my sister on the back of the motorcycle. I parked right outside of um, Convention Hall. Like, I just pulled my bike up on the sidewalk and left it. Walked up, walked right in like a rock star. And people I hated you. Hated. Yeah. Went in. And what Bruce did was amazing, man, because yeah. he was just practicing. But he knew. All, so he'd stop in the middle of the songs, right, oh, and yeah. talk to people. But he knew all those people were waiting to get in. So he opened up the doors of Convention Hall and put speakers out and shot them out to all the people. I, that I, th get in. I think that was when he was on maybe the Today Show. Okay, I think that's what he did when he was on the Today yeah. Show, I, I, and that I, was just really cool of him to do that. Oh yeah, it's great. It wasn't about money or getting people in. He well, he's not worried about that. Everybody. I mean, yeah. that. I hope he's not worried about money. I, I've given him thousands over the years. <laughs> one one quick story on yeah. that note is that um, Bruce played at the Wonder Bar this summer with a guy named Joe Grushecki. Yeah, and you had to have tickets, and I kind of bought the tickets thinking I knew my girlfriend was going to be here, and I said, you know, I'm going to buy these tickets uh, if I go, if I don't go, if you know, Bruce is in. You know, you follow Bruce on, uh, you know, some of the Instagram stuff or his wife, you know, or his, or his daughter. You'll see that, you know, he could be in, you know, anywhere, you know, Italy having a good time. So yeah. so I bought the tickets and uh, I knew Bruce was home. We actually, uh, there was a photo from some fan, a selfie with him on the boardwalk on Friday night. So I knew he was home. And so we went on Saturday. And the first thing you see there is a guy named Dan Lee, who's the teleprompter guy. Bruce does not play without a teleprompter. Really? Yeah, really? because he's got hundreds of songs, and you know he's oh, yeah. sixty-six years old, so it's okay. It's like karaoke. Yeah, yeah it's kind of yeah. it's kind of karaoke, but he it's does like, have a teleprompter. It's probably more of like a glance, like okay, got that. Well, you, you know, I mean, his, his song catalog is is ridiculous. Plus, yeah. he likes to play other music, and then uh, then you see his guitar tech, you know, and I'm going, this is going to happen. I'm like, yeah. this is happening, and uh, the bar holds, you know, three hundred people maybe max, and uh, and then the the highlight of that show, where you know. We're, and we saw him, you know, we're in front of the stage, we're watching like other bands play. There was two warm-up bands. And right before he came on, the woman next to me goes, are you excited? I said, yeah, I'm excited. The best part is I rode my bicycle here. Yeah, That's yeah. the best part. Yeah. I mean, people were there from all over the world, you know, yeah. and I'm like, I rode my bike. That's and the crazy great. thing is too, like, you'll know, like you knew Bruce was gonna be at Convention Hall. Yeah. And, but sometimes he'll just roll up in a bar or he was at a wedding and just got up and started. My a buddy of mine has had relations with his niece. Yeah. And uh, she would just send him pictures. Define like, relations. 
They've kissed Net- on the lips once or twice. Netflix and chill. But Netflix and chill. But no, like <laughs> she 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 sent him a picture and he showed me. It was like she took a selfie and she was like, like there's my uncle just playing at this wedding. Big deal. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, everything's in perspective, I guess. Yep. Top or bottom number five. Uh, stats in the ear or sportscaster on air. Oh, sportscaster on air. I mean, that's you know. I'm 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 a frustrated uh, play-by-play guy in terms of you know <laughs> I mean I make no bones about the fact that I want to do the play-by-play and every like even this weekend uh, someone didn't show up you know we we tape two shows every weekend typically every weekend and one time one of the guys who is supposed to be the play-by-play guy and is that what you you were in Vegas for I was yeah I was I was at a race in Vegas and one of the guys didn't show up because you know some timing and my you know the producer goes uh you you look ahead Lewis do your thing and. And I called the race like, you know, like anybody else would. And, you know, everybody's like, wow, you did it. I'm like, I've been doing it my whole life. It's not that hard, you know. And I I had no idea who was even in the final. It was the final round of a class. So I looked up at the screen. We have a a monitor with the names on it, some information. I'm like, hope I could say those names because sometimes those names, you know, you look at a name, you go like, how do you pronounce that name, you know? So yeah. Tyler Wadarchik, I believe, is the one that was the tough one. The other one was like Scott Burton. That was easy. <laughs> I get what he says with names. Yeah. FLD being like, it's a, it's, a, it's a show online, so anyone can get it anywhere in the world. We have a big fan base in uh, like Dubai and Saudi Arabia saying those names. Yeah, <laughs> very I apologize. Yeah, how about how about like when the Rangers when I was do, uh, oh, doing yeah, live do when, announcing them live? Yeah. You know, like to public events. I do a lot of live public events. Yeah, and I they get a new player, some Russian dude. Yeah, who, it was a rookie. And, check off the yeah, and you, like and if you, you messed up one syllable, one syllable. They, they would get not the players, but the management will get furious. People will call you on that. Yeah, and in our in our oh. t- in our TV truck, we have a name. It's uh, a guy. Um, his name is Rick Takahashi. Uh, crashed his race car at a track in California, and we were going to use the uh, the video, you know, uh, as I call it, gratuitous drag racing violence, mm-hmm. to put on the air because it's kind of spectacular. And he was okay, so that's the most important part. But uh, the person who was our play by play guy, who I love dearly. Could not, you know, pronounce the guy's name. And after the third or fourth try, I looked at him. I said, "You've been to Japan. You know, you you eat Japanese food all the time. <laughs> it's a simple Japanese name." And then he looked at me like he, you know, and I know he's. I know speaking of, you know, weapons, I know he's. He might be carrying one. <laughs> and I was like, well, maybe I'll just, you know, shut up and sit in the corner. But, yeah. uh, Once you get your head though wrapped around it, yeah. you start to flutter on it like Derek Step on. I step on. Step yeah. on. Step on. And I, I called him Step Ann the first time. Yeah. I announced and the guy's like, No, it's Step on. And then I got so like wrapped up in it because he was walking down the And then it's in your head. He's on his it's... way. Right. And I was like, shit. And I and I think I said it. Yeah, there there's wrong. there's names that definitely uh freak me out, you know, that I've I've seen at the races for years. And some of them are just because you know, the, the the thing that most people don't do is they actually don't go over to the person and say, how do you say your name? That's the most important thing because that's the easiest yeah. way to find out. Yeah. You know, and it's not rude to do that either no. because, uh, you know. You don't know. You and know. Joe Theismann. That's not even his name. The- Theismann. It's Joe Theismann. Theismann. Yep. South River's Joe Theismann. And, yeah, and they changed it. He's from Jersey, right? They changed it when uh, he was going for the Heisman. Yep. They cha- the college changed the pronunciation. Because of the Heisman, Theismann. Theismann. Yeah. So I mean, it's not rude to go up. Some people he might want to be, you know, introduced as his real name. It's 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 so funny too, especially being online. Obviously, there's forums to comment, whether it be YouTube or anything. Yeah. And when I'm when I'm telling a story or whatever, it, it, and people from other countries say things differently, like they just do. Like like Jeremy Clarkson says, we say Amazon. He says am, am, as, Amazon. I can, I can listen to Jeremy Clarkson <laughs> all day long. Yeah, and, we were talking. To- Top Gear is you know in terms of genius, and it's a shame that they had the uh, issues they did. Oh, the fracas. Yeah, and they're going to do something else. You know, well, he's on Amazon now. Yeah, so I'm, that's why he's doing I'm the commercial. Ex- I'm excited about that. I also, um, since you're a car person, I watch um, on Velocity this show called Wheeler Dealers. Which oh is yeah, I've heard this of that. guy. This guy Ed China. He could he does things with an automobile. You know, repairs things and fixes yeah. things. Just amazing with a British accent, which I'm a big fan. It's of, all so. about the British. Like you need almost you almost need a British accent. It's <laughs> that's like a staple in car culture. It, if you're it, talking about cars, like, like oh, for the, he might never know what he's talking about, but as I always think he, he knows it. Just for the record, <laughs> I love a British accent. Yeah, me too. Appreciate that. <laughs> love it. Absolutely but, love uh, it. We, oh, I, on air. I'm an on air guy. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on air, on top. Me, me too. <laughs> me too. I don't, I, I don't, I don't never, I don't have experience really like giving the stats from you know I sixty percent everything. I'm me either. You know I'm two cups stupid. 
There, one there, cup, there, there, is, there is a little bit of a skill to how you deliver the information to somebody else. Sure. Because if you if you kind of uh, phone it in, then they train wreck it, and then you have to kind of go fix it. You know, we're, we're we're most of our shows are live to tape, so we can actually stop, oh, wow. go back and fix things. It's oh, not like a so much well, yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but what happens? It it makes it makes you get used to the idea that if you make a mistake, you're going to fix it. So, so things are not as uh, you know, when you're live. You're we've we've done some live shows. We've we've done more this year than we had in the past. And live is incredible because you know it's just like nobody makes a mistake. You know the graphics people get everything right. The uh, the director amazing, gets right? the right shot sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. well, you know, <laughs> you know, there's a lot. Every, I'm sh- sure everybody's out there watching a game, regardless of what the game is, and you see a mess up. Like they cut to a camera, and the camera's moving. Yeah, that, like, that, right? that it, it happens. That man. does happen. And, that's that's okay. I, I kind of like the screw ups. It shows yeah. that that it is live. But sure. But the energy level and you know, every, I always when we're live, I always take a breath before I say something or give something to somebody else, just so I go like, is that the right thing? Like you know, you cannot. Yeah. You know, you cannot make a mistake that'll yeah. just people will talk about for the rest of time, or you know, mm-hmm. make you know, make it on YouTube forever too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I have a little game I want to play for you, and I've never done this before, and uh, it's a little different. Okay, all right. We always play a little game. You're, he's obviously a huge Bruce fan. Let's see how good of a Bruce fan he is. <laughs> all right, name that tune. Sure. How many seconds do you think is fair? I mean, knowing I, what what we know about Louis not, Bloom. Do you have the rights to play Bruce's music? I, well, you can play a second or two. Yeah, that's true. I mean, true. it's fair use when you're not, you know. As uh, a matter like of fact, I will tell you this. If if we review his, the song after I play it, we're allowed to play it. Okay. that So, but... Yeah, I, I bet you he'll nail it. But me, how many seconds? I like. Oh, I know that Bruce song, but I probably can't tell you the name of it. Oh, so do you want to compete against Louis? No, I'm saying nah. I can't. Right. <laughs> yeah. Name that tune. I'm just going to scroll through. Two seconds. A note. As fast as I can hit play and pause. What do you think's fair? Uh, yeah, I mean, just as long as you. You know, Mike, you're putting me on the spot here. All right, here, you ready? We'll start <laughs> out with an easy one. I'm going to give you two seconds of it. Okay. Here we go. Born in oh, the USA. On. All right, that was <laughs> one second. I knew that one. All right, too. so is two going to be good? <laughs> That's not hard. All right, here we go. Uh, Dar- I'm, if my girlfriend was here, she'd be loving this right now. You know that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Mike setting it up. Diamonds and gold, all the bombs, baby. Then I don't know what that one is. That's um, tough, right? I ain't got you. Yeah, man. I don't even know if I've ever heard Hold this on, song. Hold on, kid. Mom's baby that bank would hold. That's pretty impressive. I don't. I've never even heard that. that, is, song. that is that from Tunnel of Love? It is from Tunnel of Love. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Oh man. And just for the record, loved it. Reviewed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loved it. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, Love right. that album that, yeah. that's on. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Hmm. You know, my iPhone, by the way, also has the Sex Pistols and the Ramones and the Clash. I like, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, 70s, 80s punk. Punk, yeah. Yeah. Love that stuff. Especially the Clash were unbelievable. I saw oh, the, yeah. I saw the Clash play once, and it was like, you know, an experience I'll that's never awesome. forget. Ready? Yeah. Nah, that's tough. That's almost that was like, oh, another charity <laughs> part of Fox Duck It almost sounds like Green Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. That riff was that was uh, a Green Day riff. <laughs> we play King of the Mountains. I know the song, but I don't know the name of the this song. This one is called Blood Brothers. It's off the greatest hits. Yeah, Blood Brothers. It's uh, late nineties. That was the tour that I went to and uh, sat there and looked at my sister and go, It's over. It's over. <laughs> the tempo is too slow. <laughs> oh yeah. You like you like rocking and rolling Bruce. Uh, you gotta rock well, and roll. Well, you know, he, that was uh the band was apart for a long time, then they came back together and they played a giant stadium and I went to a show. And I, I'll never forget. I looked at my sister and I said, "I said I'm pretty much this is I'm done." <laughs> they jumped the shark <laughs> because the tempo, the tempo was too slow. Like yeah. you cannot play those songs at a slower tempo. They have to have that like energy level. You know, they ha- they need that. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, I like I could watch him play with a guitar yeah. acoustic, but I mean, you got the whole band there, and I'm 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 never. I looked at my sister. I said, "I'm done. I'm done." And then and then things changed. He wrote a new. You know, he wrote the Rising. You know, the Rising. Yeah. And without that, who knows what would happen? Here we go. Here we go. Born to run, tramps like <laughs> us, baby. We were born to run. Which, which, by the way, is the reason why I actually got into Bruce from Southside Johnny, because a friend of Southside mine, Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes, and right? the Asbury yeah. Jukes. My friend in 1976 came over to my house and said, "I got this album. It's awesome. We got to listen to it." Then I, I listened to it. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Um, that was. Um, 
that's from one of the early albums, so I'll just think about that. But my friend bought the Southside Johnny album over, and I read the liner notes, and I saw that Bruce Springsteen wrote a bunch of the songs, then I bought Born to Run, and I heard Born to Run, and it was like, like this is unbelievable. Yeah. But what was great is uh, my cousin at the time, who was older than me, I told him I was you know, listening to Bruce. He goes, ah, oh, Bruce is done. I go, what are you talking about? He, lo he loved the first two albums. He actually saw him play at the bottom line, which is one of the legendary Bruce shows in 75. And he said him, all his friends, when, when Bruce came out with like that rock album, they, they were over it. And still to this day, whenever I see him, I go, I can't believe <laughs> that you don't like Born to Run. That's, you know? Yeah, that's crazy. But that's uh, kind of the way people think, I this guess. This is my number one. That's kind of it's kind of what you're talking about too. This is a great yeah, great song. You know what I mean? It's kind of like this is what I want to hear when I listen to Bruce. Sure. Can you give it to us, Derek? Rosalita. I don't I don't know it like word for word. <laughs> you don't know it? I know like the chorus better than I know the. Uh, I just want to hear your Bruce. No. Y yeah, I, I like know it, but I don't know. <laughs> I only know the, the chorus. You know that sound. Yeah, it's, it's very loud. It is very loud. <laughs> what is uh, the what? best? The best. The best part about that song? Yeah. Is at the end he goes. He mentions the word Jersey. <laughs> and I've and I've seen that song well, played. Swamps of Jersey. Yeah. I've, see, I've seen that song. Oh, yeah. I've seen that song played in Italy and Germany, all over. You and know. everybody cheers. And I know. And I wait for that moment, and I scream as loud as I can scream. <laughs> Jersey. Yeah. When is the last time you heard this sound? Not the dubstep music, but you know. This sound? No, can't remember. That first part. Want me to play for you again? And let me hear the first part. What does it mean to you? It's like a fax machine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bring back memories? Yeah. What? Dialing the wrong phone number, basically. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I mean, we haven't gotten that one. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you have an AOL account? Uh, unfortunately, yes. Do you remember your AIM screen name? I don't still, don't I, say it. I still have it, actually. Do you, uh, oh, you do? You I use still, it? I still have an AOL account. All right, we're going to guess real quick what it was. You want to go first? Yeah, we always guess our guests. Okay. I am name or... Yeah. What, and um, I'm pretty good. <laughs> you are pretty good, man. We haven't done it in a while. Uh, uh, so cars and Bruce and like music. Uh, it's uh, tough, right? Uh, it's uh, uh, like it's like LB Fast or something. Oh, like. that's what I was gonna say. I, I was gonna know. say. Uh, I was gonna say LB. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna go. Um, AP. <laughs> A AP nah. squeal them. I don't know. <laughs> nah. I'm, I'm pretty simple when it comes to screen names. Is it's it L Bloom? Lewis. It's probably Lewis L Bloom. Bloom. It's like Ellis Lewis, you know, something, something. It's pretty uh, simple. Uh, oh, you don't, I'm, to, I'm not, you don't want to tell the world nah, what it is? It's not, it's not that interesting. If you, it, if you go on my photo website, you can see you can get my email address. Okay. So it's pretty easy. <laughs> What's that website again? Uh, my photo website has my, you know, my email Lewis address. Lewis Bloom photo Photography. It's Lewis just LewisBloomPhoto.com. LewisBloomPhoto.com. Lewis Lewis you can see all those beautiful images of Asbury Park from back in the day and new ones too hmm. so this music indicates uh really the nuts and bolts of this show right this is called the armchair futurist the year is the year 2050 pizza and the beers will get you in the room but this show is all about the revolution the revolution of our guest you mr lewis bloom what does your industry look like in the year 2050 it's a drag racing wow that's uh that's a good question um i would imagine that there'll be uh there'll be some form of drag racing i i think people you know they want to. They have cars. They want to step on the gas, and that's not going to change. How it evolves is a good question because you know you have an issue with safety in terms of speed. You know you can only go so fast. The tracks are only you know so long, and um, I think I think what'll happen is there'll be there'll maybe some other fuel sources. You know not just nitromethane and gasoline. <laughs> electric. I mean, yeah, there isn't. There is people working on electric oh, yeah. dragsters. You know trying to go 200 miles per hour with an electric dragster. Well, that immediate torque is. <laughs> Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Well, I've seen rocket cars. That's the most immediate of all torque because <laughs> it's just like this immediate blast off, you know, yeah. but I, I, it's hard to say. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, people, you know, the, the, uh, the third and fourth generation of the people racing second generation are still involved and there's, there's a way they can do that because there is a program to get kids involved racing with uh, smaller scale versions of drag, drag cars. They look like dragsters and it's, uh, it's kind of cool. So, you know, mm. I've watched, I've watched people's parents race i've watched their kids and i've watching their grandkids now so i've seen three generations at the races so as long as there's people participating because it really is a participation sport it's it's it needs it needs big stars or you know people who who are um going to provide 
you know, entertainment on a bigger level, but ultimately it's about the average Joe getting in his Camaro and going to Raceway Park and stepping on the gas. Does, yeah. does it ever That's get it. to the point where, like, the human can't keep up with the speed? Um, I think I've seen race cars go 337 miles an hour in the quarter mile. And that was that was pretty that's pretty intense. And, I've, and like now a, now they only race a thousand foot, which because they actually shortened the distance to give the drivers more chance to stop to have oh, more race because they're going to that stop. fast. I think they yeah. gotta eventually just extend the 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 drag raceway it should just be well, longer. Well, some of them you can't you can't do that. That's the problem. Is right, that, land know, is land. Yeah, land. Yeah. You know, they, they've been there for four, like Raceway Park is bordered by a state road, which yeah. which you know that's kind of the length of it. So. So, you know, there's some, some concern about that. And now the cars, I'll give you an example. Um, a car this year ran almost 300 miles prior to half track to the eighth mile, which, you know, is half the quarter mile. Yeah. So that is like, you know, that is just intense. Bonkers. You know, I mean, you know, that's something Jeremy Clarkson and Richard Hammond, you know, the guys from <laughs> Top Gear. Yeah. They always talk about the gold standard, the quarter mile. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but that- from not to sick. To- <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, you know, and, and, and that is to go 299 point something to the eighth mile. Yeah. You know, where- 25 years ago, 20 years ago, someone, the first guy to go 300 and a quarter mile is a guy named Kenny Bernstein. And that was like unheard of that. You know, nobody's going to do that. And now they're going that to the half track mark, which is, you know, well, that's how hard they run the race cars. There's got to be a point where you can't, your mind and sight can't react to your hands fast and feet fast enough to control. Well, right? I, th- I, th- I think a jet pilot would experience that. You know, like the G-forces are so strong that you can't, you know, you can't react yeah, to but, it. Yeah, but I would, argue, I would argue that uh, in a plane, you don't, you don't uh, the reaction time would feel different because you don't feel the speed flying. Well, you there's, know what I mean? there's, no, there's no sense of it because you have nothing to judge it by. But right. at the racetrack, you certainly, I've, I've gone 160 in a dragster. Yeah. And the first couple times I did it, it was like, whoa, I didn't, I didn't even have a sense of anything that happened. Yeah. Yeah. But after a couple times, it kind of slows down in your head. Yeah. And I think the people who race all the time, race the 300 mile per hour race cars, they kind of get used to you know, the speed of it and it becomes, they kind of slow it down in their brain. That's what a- I've been told. You athletes? Know? Athletes? Are they athletes? Um, not in the classic sense, no. no. I, th- I, think, I think it's, it's got to the point now where the, the top racers are in good shape. You know, they're, they're exercising. They're doing cardio. And a lot of it's because the weight of the cars is so sensitive that if you are a large person, it's going to make it hard to make the car run that, that hard. And you have to always, you're always moving the weight around. Yeah, it's almost like so, a jockey thing. Yeah, course, so right? a lot of the racers, I see people I've known for years, and I'm like, you should eat something, yeah. you know, because they're really concerned about keeping their weight down. So the only way they can keep their weight down is to to start, you know, they 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 train, yeah. You know, and and I think, you know, as I've gotten older, you know, I'm 56, and I see people I know who I grew up with, and you know, some of them have taken the 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 course of you know staying in shape. You know, they do cardio, they go to the gym, and some haven't. And I think the the racing community basically went from people who drank a lot of beer and you know hung out and you know went out and partied and now <laughs> now they're now they're really focused on on their on their health and you know it's just yeah. I think that's just part of society that people do that you know and 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 that really is is and one of the racers the guy who won the championship this week and I'll give you a quick story his name is Antron Brown I've played basketball with him and um, he is one of the most athletic people I've ever seen in my life the guy is. Just, just unbelievably fast, and just you know, really gifted at. I mean, he could he could be an athlete in any form. He was, I think, a sprinter in high school, hmm. so he really was an athlete. Mm-hmm. And he translated that into being he first raced for Troy Vincent. <laughs> Sprinting wasn't fast enough. He needed yeah. to get in a car. Yeah. <laughs> he, 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 the guy who was the uh, the player rep for the uh, NFL is Troy Vincent. He used to play for the Eagles. Yeah, and, and he is he used he actually his first gig in racing was for Troy Vincent who came to the races, I met him a couple times, and he would bring a jet by, and like he'd go, that guy's in the jets. I'd be like, oh, I'm, you know, I'd go yeah, yeah. introduce myself. <laughs> but uh, but this guy, Antron, he crosses that line in terms of not mm-hmm. being a guy who could just step on the gas, but a guy who was, who was really an athlete. But not most drag racers are more, you know, it's about reflexes, it's about you know being able to keep the car in the groove, being able to react to something at 300 miles per hour. Oof. That's pretty crazy, man. <laughs> it's nuts. Lewis, I can't thank you enough for coming in, man. It, 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 it's special to me that you came in when you did, and I want to wish you the best of luck thank going you. out west. And uh, I'm really happy for you, and I hope it all works out. Well, I've enjoyed my time, Derek. You're uh, you got a great sense of humor, and oh, thank you, man. I, I appreciate you know the car thing. I I got lots of people for that. You know, I got 
I am. I know lots of car. We'll people. have to exchange those digits. Yeah, man. Is there anywhere anything you want to plug on the way out? You want to plug your website and your maybe your Twitter handle? Well, uh, LewisBloomPhoto.com at LB Stack Guy. That's uh, that's pretty much my Twitter. I really like Twitter. Because yeah, it's Twitter, great. Twitter. I, I, Make sure you follow us. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll do that. I, I have an attention span of about thirty seconds. That Twitter's good for that. <laughs> it used to be a half hour because I was raised on uh, sitcoms from the nineteen sixties. Sure, <laughs> thirty minutes and I'm done. Yeah. I got to do something else. But Twitter's Twitter's a lot of fun. Derek, Derek, do anything you want to plug? I just muted his mic. PizzaBeerRevolution dot com or PBRPodcast dot com. You can find us on the web, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Us, give us some love, and we'll love you back. I unmuted you. At the Derek D. See you.